Now, what I've done is I've taken the Asteroids game and I've um, created some new scenes. Now, just in general, when you have your uh, project down here and you have your assets, you have a scenes folder here. If you click that, you'd probably have just one that says sample scene. That's one we've just been using as default. If you right click on this, you can do a create. Okay, I'll wait till you get that. Now, if you think what a scene is in a movie, it's just a, you got a scene where you're in a classroom, you got a scene where you're out in front of the building, you got a scene when, so they're just different scenes. Same, same type of principle. So down here in the assets and the scenes, you can right click on that and create. And you'll see scene here somewhere. I wish they put that in alphabetical order. Um, but you got scene here. Yeah, you can go ahead and create one. It's easy to delete them. And you can call it whatever you want. Uh, the uh, ending ending scene, for example. Now at this point, you see this uh, this right up here. Um, this is the current scene that's uh, open. So yeah. Now if you double click um, one of them, like I double click sample scene. It opens what we've been working on there. Yeah. If I double click uh, in game, it'll bring up the in game there. If I double click title screen, it'll bring that up. So those are just ones I created. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on this. <laughs> and then if I if I click play, let me just show you what it does. Yeah, I think that's playing. If I do S, that starts it. Now, if I press my space bar, so sound effect. In it. They see some problems there if I do that. We're going to program that uh, eventually, so we'll handle that. Probably an explosion would have been a good thing to put on the uh, hitting the rock, but I just put that in the, and that's my ending scene there. So let's let's talk about this. Now I got uh, this one right here, and I just uh, added this ending scene doesn't have anything on it. So if I double click that, and now if I click play, it's nothing there, is there? So um, by default, whatever scene you have open is the starting one. So um, when I, you know, even if I'm editing this, I'd want to go back to my title screen to get that started. Um, up on um, file build settings. When you're um, uh, creating new scenes, they won't automatically be included in your build. So this is how you do it here. You see there's scenes in the build. You can add all open scenes, and then that'll add any you have open. Or, like this ending scene right here that I just created, I can click and drag and drop that up here, and it'll add that. So now when it does the build, it'll automatically include that in. So just anytime you you add a new scene, just make sure that it gets added into the build settings. And then down here, you see there's a build and run or build. You can just simply say build. And um, you notice there's other platforms you could target this for. If you want to create a game to run an Android um, or uh, iOS, then um, you can do that. Um, I think the iOS, you have to have something additional. Um, run an Xcode as compression method. I think somewhere you have to tell it um, somewhere you have to tell it uh, some kind of um, 
trying to think of the word. It's they they have these Mac in the cloud is one of them, such that you can sign up for their service, such that you can generate and build and all so forth your your iOS app for it. So it is like another piece, unless you're doing this on a a, um, a MacBook. Okay. I just canceled out of that because I don't care about adding this empty ending scene I added on here. Now I just dropped on a, a button here. Um, and uh, you see I got a start game script. So I put a script on it. And um, if I come back to my assets, here's my starting game script. So I double click that. Um, wouldn't hurt to create one, yeah. Uh, right. I created that over in paint.net in case you're wondering, and then just import it in. I'm going to be having you as part of the, the project today is create an opening scene. Um, and what I'll have you do is you, you go out and you can grab a, like a, a, you can create your own if you want to do, but like then have this, have the image take up the entire page mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the name of your game, you know, David's asteroids. You know, and throw some asteroids on it, or whatever you want, or you could um, copy something off of uh, you know the Google images. That's up to you. <clears throat> it's amazingly simple to change to a different scene. Now, figuring out how you want to do it is a uh, is another thing. Um, uh, I put it under assets. Um, I don't think it matters to be honest, but uh, from an organization standpoint, as your, as your game gets bigger and bigger, you want to make sure you have all these in separate folders. Um, so you have all of your scripts in one folder, you all of your, you know, images and maybe another folder, um, uh, some, some kind of organization scheme. Because if you think about it, if I have 20, um, 20 rocks, 20 um, asteroids flying around on the screen, and I want to put code behind each one of them, how many of these little C-sharp things am I going to have? Oh. Well, 20 of them to hit on here, won't I? Oh, yeah. And uh, if, you add, if you drop on all those images and so forth, it'll very quickly become unmanageable. All right. I got the script now. Okay. Now... Um, you have to have a using up here, using unityengine.scene management. That's what allows you to change between scenes. Okay. Then, down in your update, this is called per once per frame as your game, you know, moving through cycling and so forth. So um, the what? Let me sign in for you. It says I have a 30 day trial that has been recommended. Yeah, I got that on my computer the other day. Shouldn't ask for that anymore. That doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> Where are you? 
what I haven't explored, I expect if you probably created your own account, it would probably let you back in and so forth. So again, you need this using uh, Unity Engine dot management up here at top. Would there be a way to just make it so you don't have to press S, you just like use your mouse to press it? Yeah. Um, how you do that? Input dot mouse. Mouse click, mouse button, get mouse button. Uh, returns whether the given mouse button is held down. And determines the given, okay, integer button, button. No. One. Um, the wonder. <laughs> I don't know if one's a. It's uh, looking for an integer. I'll look it up if this doesn't work. And I'm going to copy these. Now this input get key, um, these are key codes defined. What is that one? Oh, just uh, if they push S, it starts the game. Oh, you're still yeah. starting the game. Okay. Now, um, when you do the key code, that's curious. Why is that underlined? Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Uh, when you do the get key code, uh, it does key code dot, and then you can pick your, your um, key that's been pressed. There's probably something similar for um, Unity in terms of the mouse. Um, so I'm going to, since I'm right here, I might as well just go look. Well, that's not going to be very useful. Looks like they use numbers. <laughs> Zero is for the left button, one for the right button, two for the middle button. So I guess I want zero for the left button because that's what I was planning. Okay, so I'll come here. I'll put zero. Okay, now let's, let's test that. So I'm attached to Unity. Then I'll talk about what it does if it works. Okay, so I'm going to left mouse click. Yeah, that works. So yeah, you definitely can have that if you want. Um, now, what this does then, if that's true, that they push the left mouse button, it comes down here and does a scene manager dot load scene. That scene manager is just what we imported up. Um, when, we, when we imported this up here, it brought that in. So that's not anything that you have defined. That's just uh, brought in when you import that. And then the dot load scene, that loads a scene. Not only just loads it, but actually displays it also. Um, and then this is the, the name of the scene, sample scene. So if I go back here and I go to my scenes under my um, project, that's this one right here, sample scene. So whatever you name it here is what you need to put in right here. 
Right. Sample scene. sample scene is what the the initial one came up to begin with. Now, now that's now that's your that's your first page. This is where you're going to. Oh, okay. So it's it's probably sample scene if I had to guess. That's the default one that Unity has. So you're going to want yours to say sample scene there. Yeah. Now I wanted to unload it just to make sure that um, it didn't consume memory. Not that it matters since everything we're doing is so small. Uh, so I did a screen manager dot unload scene async. And then I put in um, title screen. Now that should match what you named it over here. I named mine title screen. So that whatever, whatever you said you named yours is what you should put here. Now there could be a reason why you'd want to leave it loaded, where you wouldn't want to unload it, like if you want to have it pop up pretty often, and you want that performance gain where you don't have to sit there and have it go through the resources. Um, but otherwise, typically you don't want to leave things loaded because it just consumes memory. And that's all there is to, to opening up a new scene. Is that, um, is that good? Now the um, I created an ending scene uh, for the end of the game, or wait a minute, in game for the end of the game. And I'm gonna double click that, and you can see I spent a lot of time on it. I really didn't do anything. <laughs> we got our main camera here, and um, what I did is. Um, What did I do? Assets. Oh, there. I dropped on a um, uh, sound wave. So I went and found a sound wave off the internet. And um, just want me to make sure you're careful where you go. Wave, or I think I typed game over, wave, free. I think I went to this free sound. No, he says he used his own voice. But there's lots of different different ones. Uh, royalty free for you music and sounds. You want to make sure the one you go to um, is one you can actually um, download from. Um, like here, this one has an MP3 and a WAV file. Mm -hmm. I think I downloaded WAV files. Um, Interesting. Um, <laughs> these are free ones you can use. You know, if you were creating your own um, own game, looks like. Um, now there's does say plans and pricing, so I'm guessing if I click this, it won't be download. Yeah, that will be limited. Yeah, there's cost. <laughs> Um, but anyway, you found some kind of WAV file, MP3, you can create it yourself. Um, on these machines, I put a Audacity on them. So if I come here, go to Audacity, it's really easy to use. And you see there's a little red button for record. Game over, man. Game over. Game over, man.
<laughs> game over, man. Game. It's kind of loud. <laughs> but see, you can create one just real easy. Now, once you have done that in Audacity, and again, I could not tell you what all this stuff is. This is record. This is stop. This is play. That's all I know about this. It's that easy of a utility. Then once you get done with that, you do a file uh, export, and uh, you can export as a WAV file. I don't know if I got the MP3 set up on all the computers. I think I meant to. I think I copied the lame uh, DLL, um, but I'm not sure if I tested it. Um, but you can definitely export as WAV. And then you save it to, to wherever, and you can use it. So anyway, you get a WAV file of some sort. And what I did then is very simply, I just uh, dropped it in the assets and then I dropped it on here. And that's all I did. Um, like if I, if I delete the game over from this, if I drop pulse gun on there, yeah, I think I did it there. I dropped pulse gun. So now if I go back to my scenes, I go back to my starting scene title screen I guess you want to save yeah I want to save okay so then I'll run it let's see click to start it go hit that assuming I can find my ship there it is okay see and it just did a little so that's how easy it is just drop, drop a uh, audio on there for the entire you know the auto plays I'm going to go back to end game. Get rid of the pulse gun. And drop um, game over on it. Now it'll go back to uh, playing game over. Game over, man. Game over. You know what that's off of, right? I think I mentioned it. Yeah, the Aliens game. And um, it goes scenes. Sample scene, I'll save that. So how do I know if I uh, put it on the ending scene? That's, that's copy and paste it over there. I moved it over there. You, if you go to your ending scene, double yeah. click it. Over here in the hierarchy, you should see your main camera. And then if you drop down here, you'll see uh, the audio. Yeah. And uh, you see how there's a loop here? So it means I could sit there and have, say, game over, game over, man, game over, oh, 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 you know, right. on forever. And um, title scene. I want that change. Oh, save. Okay. Now change. Run. So, you know, wh where would this come in handy? Um, if you had uh, music playing the entire time your game's going, then if you do the loop, it just sits there and you've played those games where it just keeps playing the same tune over and over. Um, so that's how you do it. <clears throat> what I did is um, you can create a scene by just right clicking on scenes here and say create and then create scene right there. That's how you create these new scenes, basically different different parts of your game. And then we just uh, located a WAV file and we dropped it on there. Now, um, not for the ending scene. Now for the um, sample scene here. If you go back to the assets here. Um, you don't see anything new, do you? I'm C sharp wise. If I go to bullet movement, so I'll come over here to bullet movement. <clears throat> Up here at the top. Notice that I put public uh, or um, public audio source and BSRC. 
and then semicolon. I don't know why you don't uh, have to import for that, but it just comes in as default, I guess. Then down here, now that, by the way, that BSRC is whatever you want to call it. Bullet source. I don't know why I called it that. Um, but that's whatever you want to name it. And then you've got your BSRC equals get component audio source. Now this has to look exactly like what you see right there. Now I put this audio source right here, audio data, but um, you don't need that because I, I moved it up here. I realized that I needed to access it not only in the start, but in the updates. I put it in the wrong place. So that isn't doing anything. Yes. Then down here, I checked to see if they press the space bar. If they press the space bar, then I said, okay, the bullet's alive. And I said, bsrc.play. Now, from there, everything is pretty much the same as what, what we looked at before. Now, if I come over here... If I um, look at my different elements here, I have my, of course, camera. I got my um, black background. I got my ship. Got my rock. And I got my bullet. Notice something new here. We got an audio source. So if you're trying to wonder, well, how, do they, how does the connection, how's it made? Um, well, the, um, when you, when you add an audio source, how you add an audio source is you click add component, audio, audio source. What this does is this connects it to the bullet. So then over in my code. When I say get component audio source, that's so generic, isn't it? Do I even say a name there? No. Uh, what that does, that comes over here and says, okay, is there an audio source? Yeah, it is. So I'll get it. Now, what I um, what I haven't played with yet, uh, the audio, I've, I've done the very basic audio um, when I first started working with Unity. But I got to wondering when I was creating this on to show you in class, I got to wonder, well, what if you want two, two audio sources? How do you tell which one? That's the part I need to play with to figure out. Um, because if your character gets, um, gets hit by a, a rock or your ship gets hit by a rock, you want it to explode, right? How about if your ship um, maybe bounces off of something? If you want it to say Boeing, right? So it's possible you'd want two different, uh, you know, audios. So I'll, I'll play with that. I, I don't get the answer to that yet. Now, when you added this, did you have anything in your audio clip? Did, did you add an audio source? For the bullet? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and add an audio source. Probably not. I was on a meeting. But uh, did you call three times? 
No, I haven't got it. <laughs> I saw it, but I was in a Zoom meeting. So, uh, what was your voicemail? You gonna be late? Uh, yeah, I was telling you that I'd be late because uh, we were big reading out fast and fast words. So oh, okay. Now, do you have anything in the audio clip? Yeah, I do now. You do? Yeah, I do now. How'd you do that? What? Um, this, yeah, there, the right. To the right? Yeah, the, and then. Oh, what do you know? I learned something myself. Well, um, uh, the way I do it, I didn't even see that little dot over there, is if you, can dra if you drag and drop this, you can drop it right in that blank. That's the easy way. Like if I want game over to be there, I would drag game over and drop it there and you'd see it changes to game over. I don't think I've ever tried to add it that way. But that works out pretty good too. Because it looks like it just brings up the WAV files. Yeah. But anyway, that's how you that's how you make the connection. And you can add other other um, wave files here, other so forth. Does that um make sense? Um, so the key part here is um, to add a. Add sound to uh, um, a key. Push a key and it does this out. Um, first thing is you add your WAV file. Second thing, you want to add an audio source. Um, to the um, component, whatever you're working with. Third thing, uh, you want to uh, oh, set the, what's it called? Uh, the audio clip. Set audio clip to the WAV file. You can drag and drop it, or like you see, click that little uh, circle, circle thing. And then in your code, so in the C sharp code for the component, um, what do I need? I need in um, above void start. This is where you declare things. Above a void. Void start put put that in void start. We're going to put this right here. And then in um, the um, update, I believe, void update, yeah. You're going to put And this is just an example. You can program whatever whatever key you want. Or you can focus the mouse. Mouse is a little bit trickier. You have to figure out where your mouse is. So you have to look at the position and so forth. But key is easier to program. But that's how you play it. So this is um, like the bullet firing.
to change the scene. You first add a new scene. Drop a component on it, and whatever that means. Um, could be a button, could be the entire background. Uh, drop a component on it, and then go into the in the C sharp code of the component. Um, start game at the top so at the top put using this in the update in the void update put and I'll give you two examples one of these is a mouse one of these is a um, key Um, to change the um, background music of a scene, background audio of a scene, doesn't that be music? Um, find a wave file. Drop it on the scene. And that's all you have to do. Um, let's see. Notes. Let's say 917, something like that. 15, 16, 17, 18. And what do you want? What do you want to do for the um, project? And um, I'll have you turn this uh, in um, so you can see where we're at and everything. Is create an opening scene, kind of like your starting page. And again, yeah, if you want to steal something off of um, off the internet to use, that's fine. If you want to create your own, that's fine too. It's an, entirely up to you. I'll leave that. We're not going to sell this, so it's a uh, fine to. For one time use to so missile missile command asteroid uh, title screen Let's see if they have that Bad spot. What am I going to the bad spot for? <laughs> but anyway, you can uh, grab a grab this and then stretch it. That can be your entire image on that screen. Um, and then uh, ending screen, closing screen, whatever they want to call it. Put a ending screen. Here's game over. See, I probably wouldn't. Um, I probably wouldn't even recreate it myself. I'd probably take this, stretch it out over there. And so it's saying game over, game over, or whatever you want it to say at the end. And uh, you could even program it to press enter to restart to go back to that one scene. So you don't have to do that. But I want you to have a beginning screen, an ending screen, and then put sound in there in some way. Okay, your choice on, on how you want to put sound in there.
Uh, let me go ahead and stop the recording.